Let us join in a word of prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Don't give up prayer. I say that, but did you know that there's a wrong way to pray? I know that's the most un-UCC thing I have ever said, but it's true. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to tell you there's a right way to pray. Like you have to hold your head at a perfect 45 degree angle and fold your hands just so. But still, there is a wrong way to pray, which, of course, might not be the most helpful thing to tell you when the sermon title is Don't Give Up on Prayer, because when we don't think we're good at something, we are more likely to give it up. But maybe by naming what we are not good at, we can find that which we are. The whole concept of prayer is somehow both simple and intangible. It is hard to define as well as explain. The word prayer simply means to entreat, to ask. But you have heard me say that many times that prayer is not a wish list that we make for Santa or an ATM machine where you insert your prayers and out comes either the prize or a standard unanswered prayer response that says, sorry, try again later. Asking does have its place in prayer, but even that idea is expansive. What is it that we ask? We ask questions, which yes, can be all kinds of different questions. We could ask, God, will you make me rich? Or God, please let me get that job. Or with all sincerity, God, may my slot come up to get the vaccine. Or dear God, may this biopsy be negative. There's nothing wrong with asking things of God mostly. We'll have to talk about that first one maybe, but implied in asking of any kind is a relationship between the asker and the askee. And that relationship shifts based on what kind of questions we are asking. When we know or encounter someone initially or casually, we ask questions like, how are you? Who are you? What is your name? Where are you from? What do you do? And then we take a moment to listen. I'm gonna invite you into a moment to listen. Because that listening is an essential part of what prayer is. We speak and then we listen. And then our relationship is able to progress from there. And we can ask other questions when we're far away from someone. Where where are you? And what are you doing right now? And then what's happening? Or why is this happening? And what am I supposed to be doing? What do you need? Where do we go from here? Not that that level of intimacy, deeper levels of intimacy still comes with hard questions and we can't really communicate well. Like, did you say something? Can you hear me now? Are you paying attention? What do you mean? We've all asked these questions to other people, but maybe we've also asked these kind of relational questions to God. To tell you the truth, I'm not really interested in the distinction between the questions that we've asked of God and the questions that we've asked of other people, because I have asked questions of other people in my life that were absolutely prayers. They weren't prayers to that person I was talking to, but they were prayers all the same. When I asked a doctor, when my daughter was in the hospital, will she be okay? When I've asked family members, will you forgive me? When I've asked new people that come into my life, do you want to hang out? Which is really the grown up way of saying, do you want to be friends? The questions we asked Bill and Eve today were prayers that we lifted up and blessed together as community. We've asked questions of politicians. Do you understand what you were doing? We've, I've asked questions of myself. What are you afraid of? Why did you do that? 
all of those, while not necessarily directed at God, I know to be prayers with an invitation and a communication with God there as well. Now, since I began telling you that there is a wrong way to pray, let me say that offering anything to God without a question mark at, at the end is not necessarily the wrong way to pray. The word prayer really just means to ask, to entreat, to invite God into the conversation. But that doesn't mean that any kind of prayer that isn't a question is not valid. But instead, this idea of asking, of entering into a conversation with God, is really about what I like to call posture. I'm sure a lot more people way smarter than me said that first that I have read from them. And again, when I say it's about a prayerful posture, I don't mean a bowed head and the kneeling kind of posture, but the posture of your spirit. In our scripture today, Jesus is still up on the mountain. It's a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount that we heard last week. And last week, the sermon continues today. Jesus is offering and telling the people how to glimpse the kingdom of God. And last week, he was telling them to lift up the brokenness and the pain and to know God in that, to know wholeness in that pain. And so today, Jesus is continuing, continuing that sermon and reminding us that the kingdom is both coming and already present. And here he is helping us understand the posture we need to perceive that reality. He says there is a wrong way to give, to give your alms, and there is a wrong way to pray. And the wrong way to do either is to do it so that you are seen by others. The quote is, the wrong way is doing it in order to be seen by others. Now, the language of posture fits this because when we want to be seen, we stand tall. Maybe even we grab a soapbox so we can stand even taller and we point at ourselves and our goal is to be heard. And so we project and ensure everyone is looking at us. The opposite of that would be a posture of humility and openness. So folks know what we're pointing at, that we're pointing, using our voice and our gifts to point beyond ourselves. Prayer is inviting us into a grounding, into a posture that puts us close, close to the earth, close to God, close to each other, instead of drawing ourselves out and away. And another essential part of that, the way we can enter into that posture is not only when we bring our words into that prayerful posture, but then again, following it with silence. Because if we are asking a question in a prayerful posture, not to be seen, but to be, un but to understand or engage, then what follows our questions is always silence. We wait, we listen, we pause, we open ourselves to space and maybe correction or conviction in the spirit of curiosity, care, and hope. Silence is an invitation and really a response to relationship. A podcast I was listening to this week on prayer offered a story of a pastor who went away on a silent retreat to really just spend time with God deep and dig deep into his prayer life. And so it was the second or third day and he had been praying adamantly. He had been sharing with God his struggles and his questions and his worries and his frustrations and his praise and all on and on. And he continued in this rhythm of prayer and he was alone. So he wasn't doing this to be seen by others, but as he continued to pray to God and speak to God, his truth and his struggles, he heard a voice almost audibly that said, shut up and let me love you. Prayer is talking to God. It is asking. But in that asking, we must pause, listen, let God get a word in, let God get the love in. Now, there is another rule to prayer that we find in our scripture for today, and I'm not talking about the prayer that Jesus taught us. Those are holy words, the Lord's prayer, Jesus' prayer. They are offered as a place to find grounding, but they are not to be our rule or our only prayer. After all, 
this prayer is different in Matthew than it is in Luke. And both of those are different than the prayers of the modern church in any denomination as churches throughout history, as recently as Pope Francis and countless more throughout Christianity's 2000 years have expanded the language of this prayer to the context of the moment. So the rule is not to offer these exact prayer of Jesus, but instead Jesus is clear that we not heap up empty phrases. Now that one almost seems directed at clergy, but we should all be listening for that, for the wisdom that is there, not to scare folks off from prayers in worship or praying over dinner with your family, but again, to hold the same kind of prayerful posture, engaging in God, not to be seen or to be seen well or, elo- or to speak well, but engaging God for the purposes of relationship. Empty phrases includes asking questions we're not willing to listen to the answer to. It's kind of like when someone says, how are you? While they're staring at their phone. They're not willing to listen to the answer. It's an empty question. In the same way we say things of God and offer, when we say things of God and offer praise, we don't mean or speak of the nature of God that we might not believe because we've heard fancy words over and over again. That is an empty phrase. That is not the kind of relationship God is inviting us into. For some, it might be something like saying the words almighty God. Maybe your understanding of God is different from that, or you struggle with that. And so just using that word without thinking of what it means is empty. But it's hard to know what words to use. In the time of struggle and COVID, it's hard to know what to ask. It's hard to even know what it is we can pray for, how to form coherent thoughts. But that isn't ruled out in this text. Maybe that is an okay kind of prayer. In her book on the Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount, A.J. Levine offers a Jewish story of a boy who goes to the synagogue and the rabbi overhears him reciting the first three letters of the Jewish alphabet. In Hebrew, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, you know, equivalent to ABC for us, ABC. And the rabbi smiles and asks the little boy, what are you doing? And he responds, he said, I don't know the prayers and I can't read, but if I say the letters, God puts them together for me. Similarly, I saw this meme that Chris is going to share on our screens. I saw this meme earlier in the pandemic. Dear God, all the letters, (laughs) amen. And then I love the response to dear child. I know I love you, God. That church is not the wrong way to pray. We don't have to have the right words or the right questions. We don't have to have any words at all. We just have to move into a space and posture of prayer. And sometimes we just have to depend, sometimes, always, we just depend on the spirit. In Romans, we read that the spirit intercedes for us in sighs too deep for words. And we know this has been a year of sighs too deep for words, but that's not really unique to COVID time. We live in a very wordy culture where words are both how we express ourselves and how we come to know ourselves, but also how we come to know others on a deeper level. But also it is the manipulation of words that has fueled the divides between us. And there are just so many words all of the time. It is challenging to know in what posture words are offered from others, but sometimes it's hard to know what posture they're offered from ourselves. Maybe that is why more and more people in the West are being drawn to ancient and contemplative practices, prayers and practices with less words, to Zay style worship that invites a posture of humility and connection. We've sung those songs before where you say the same line again and again and again and again, kind of like our prayer song that we sing each week. This this movement of contemplation challenges our understanding of prayer. It looks at the roots and questions 
the, and the questions behind how do we pray to really the fundamental question, why do we pray? Because if we are still operating out of a theology of an ATM prayer life, there's no reason to continue. As the scripture says plainly, when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. God knows what you need before you ask. So if you are only going to God in prayer to ask for the things on your wish list, this is a direct challenge. Why pray? If God already knows what you will say, what you need. Again, the posture of prayer is about a continued relationship. Prayer is never an end in itself. Just like any relationship we are in, it has implications for what we will do and how we will think and how we will live. The relationship we forge with God in prayer should impact us each day, each moment. And the questions we bring to God, if we bring them in a posture of openness, God will work with us as we ask those questions because questions are by nature transformative. Because if we ask a question and then receive an answer, we will then know something we didn't know before. Which again, challenges some of the reasons we reject prayer anyways. So many of us are um, just hear the expression thoughts and prayers, and it just hurts talk about an empty phrase. Too often that is a quick response to say, oh, I said something in the midst of tragedy. We hear that again and again, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, but it doesn't, it just, it, it's that emptiness, right? Talk about saying something in order to be seen by others. There is a wrong way to pray. But what if every time you wrote on someone's social media, thoughts and prayers or praying for you, that when you went to God in prayer, that you didn't only ask God to be with them and to comfort them, but you asked deeper questions. What if every time there was another act of gun violence that you want to respond to with thoughts and prayers or every person who says thoughts and prayers in response to an act of gun violence or a school shooting would go to God and say, and ask in prayer, as prayer is asking God, why is this happening? God, how do we prevent this? God, what should I do? What should we do? Those questions would change everything. It would be the beginning instead of a thoughts and prayers offered as an ending to the conversation. And so however you pray, you are invited deeper into this prayer by Jesus to glimpse the kingdom, to deepen your relationship with God and those around you. You're invited to grow and it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't and really shouldn't be about fancy words. And so in those times when you don't know how to pray, you can be like that little boy and just recite the alphabet and offer the words to God. Or we can just enter into relationship with God like we know how to do with one another and pray, God, who are you? God, what do you do? What are you doing, God? God, how can I help? Where are you? Why is this happening? What am I supposed to be doing? Dear God, what do you need of me? Where do we go from here? What do you mean? Did you say something? Can you hear me? Are you paying attention? And after each question, we wait. We hold silence and listen for God's response. So let us start wherever we are. Even if it's, oh God, how do I pray? And then we listen. Amen.